hello friends welcome to my channel thank you so much for subscribing for everyone who have seen my videos as usual my name is wolo i want to say a very big thank you to everyone who have seen my videos and have subscribed to my channel a very very big thank you to you my channel is about information and um, sharing information useful information that will be beneficial to anybody who plans to come to canada uh for the past one week i have done like three videos and all of them were not um how would i call it upload worthy they were not upload worthy i did them they had one or two I issues one of them um the wind was interrupting me and all i could hear was the sound of the wind even with my microphone so the microphone was just amplifying the wind and another one i was like um distracted i had a lot of distractions in between i think i'll be just showing the i'll show some of the clips of those two videos i did so i just felt they were not upload worthy and i just had to wait for the weekend so that i could do a video i'm just coming back from church and this is my neighborhood i'll also be showing a footage of where i live and um, i'm in my car it's not a big deal so um today i will be talking about the benefits of living in canada and it's not the usual immigration topic that i talk about but the benefits of of why i feel anybody should come to canada and the reason i'm doing it is because of people who feel they have a certain status um, back home in nigeria where i come from so someday soon i'm going to talk about my story and it's going to be a long video sometime soon but not today and um, you'll be able to understand my own perspective of the way i see things so some time ago somebody sent me an email um saying that um, um he, he mentioned how much they were earning in nigeria and was asking me if it was worth it immigrating to canada considering the fact that he already had um, a child who was already an american citizen and um they were comfortable as in both him and his wife they have comfort comfortable jo jobs their their daughter um is an american citizen and just want to know whether it's worth the movement um to canada and i told him that i told him a little bit of my story i didn't go all in details to tell him why i feel there are benefits of immigrating to canada so for that reason i i'm doing this video to highlight this benefit so that people who feel they have a comfortable status back home and um you might you might compare what you have with what is in canada so that you can make that ultimate decision if it is worth it to immigrate to canada or if it is not worth it you just leave where you are then come visit and then go back and stuff like that there are people like that there are people who just come visit and go back and there are some people who also have the permanent residency status they just use it to as free entrance to come and visit and then go back to the home country so they can continue renewing, renewing the permanent residence status for a period of for as long as they can but they have to fulfill for them to become citizens they have to fulfill a certain number of stays for your permanent residence status to be renewed if you are the, if you are the type of person that want to come visit and go back you have to fulfill a number of days of living in canada so that's uh, that's um, um the background of why i said i'll i'll be doing a video on the benefits of living in canada number one major benefit is safety uh canada is generally a safe country so in canada we have strict gun laws people can have people have license to guns people can have guns but they have strict gun laws in Canada. And so I can say that Canada is relatively safe compared to the US. And although there are pockets of crime here and there, which you can find in every country, um, even with the pocket of crime, uh, let me just mention it. This car was broken into when we newly came. We just bought the car. It was barely six months. And we packed it outside and someone just smashed it and tried to look for something inside the car so that's that's one of the things you notice when you come it's not totally totally crime free there are pockets of crime here and there there are home invasions and stuff like that but generally on a general level canada is safe it's safe to the point that you can leave your house 12 midnight come back and you don't have problems like i walk during the evenings i go to work 
by 4 p.m. and I come back home 12 midnight and I am safe. Even if I stand at the bus stop, I can still get a bus. The only thing is you will see some funny, funny people, but I, they don't do you harm, you know, compared to other places. So that's number one. Canada is safe. And um, yeah, so that's number one benefit of living in Canada. Number two benefit is free education for people who have children from age six to um, high school. So age six starts at grade one. So from grade, grade one to grade 12 is a combination of both the primary school and the secondary school. They call it pr primary school and secondary school in Nigeria. That's grade one to grade 12. It's relatively free, very free. Um, although you pay one or two monies for maybe excursion, maybe yearbook, maybe um, one or two you know one or two little things that the school will want to organize to do for their for their students you you, you just pay maybe thirty dollars or forty dollars you know and that's that's one benefit i see so you, they are not paying much the u.s also has the same thing public schools are free in the u.s canada public schools are free as well so that's number two benefit and um, for people who will attend university um the university um school fees is is highly subsidized compared to what international students pay and that's normal for every part of the world any country you go to international international students pay higher school fees compared to um, canadian students and permanent residents in in canada and there are grants everywhere so you can just you know take if you don't have the money you can take a grant and pay your school fees so that's that's part of the number two benefit of uh, living in canada and immigrating to canada so if you have um, a, f a family member who has quote-unquote a high status in Nigeria, the person will be paying so much money for school fees. You know, you can you can you can mention top popular schools like Corolla, Cor is it Corona, or Corona, Atlantic Hall, uh, British International, Lekki British, whatever. You know those schools like that in in Nigeria. We're parents are paying more than four million five million naira for almost the same standard or even less than the same less than less than the canadian educational standard so that's one thing you should also consider if you feel that your status is so high in your home country you will be paying through your nose to educate your children and the people the children in canada they are at a higher competitive level compared to the children in nigeria because they can compete globally with with people in the US. They can complete people compete with people in in China, in any of the um, developed countries. And number three is free medical healthcare. So, um, free medical healthcare compared to the US, Canada has free medical healthcare. Although some parts of the medical healthcare is not totally free, but in general, it is free. It if you want to see an optometrist, an optician, a dentist, you have to pay for it from your pocket. But there are subsidized programs for people with low income where they can go and get these things done and pay just a token, you know. And then if you're working in an organization, your organization still have a health benefit for you, which which you can use to pay for these things like your 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 eyeglasses and your, if you want to clean your feet and all that. And then secondly, the drugs medications are also not free they are not really free because you have to pay from your pocket but it's partially covered by pharmacare so pharmacare is an organization that tries to subsidize it's run by the provincial government each provincial government you try they try to subsidize medical care for medical um, drugs medication for low income earners so every year they look at your income after you filed your taxes and if your income is high they, they just, you know, give you small things to subsidize. But if you're lucky, if you work in an organization that has health benefits, you're entitled to your health benefits, so you can use your health insurance and, you know, you don't really pay dime when you're buying your medication or prescription drugs. So prescription drugs is not free in Canada, but there is still, um, there are still organized, there's still an organization like Pharmacare and then plus your health insurance that subsidize for that. So you can't get this in in back in, in in our home country where you say um, if you're not feeling well and you have a terminal illness like cancer you have to pay through your nose to like get medication i know somebody who 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 went through 
cancer therapy and i know how much she was paying in nigeria she was paying like thirty thousand naira every day for radiotherapy and the radiotherapy was for six weeks so multiply thirty thousand naira every day for six weeks for radiotherapy and not to talk of chemotherapy the drugs that she has to take to combine with the radiotherapy and she has to do this cycle maybe like three three radiotherapy or three chemotherapy combined cycle together to fight the cancer that that alone will plunge the person into serious debt so if you say your your status is so big that you feel that oh you don't need to come to canada this is one thing you should also consider medical is free in canada medical is not free in nigeria and even with that there is something that happens in canada you have your family doctor and if he diagnoses something for you that he feels that you need to see a specialist you go to see a specialist and the specialist maybe requires another specialist opinion and if there is no specialist in canada to determine what to do to determine your case they can refer you to the u.s and the canadian government or the provincial not the canadian government the provincial government will take care of your bills they will take care of your medical bills as long as the reference came from your family doctor and as long as there is no if there is no specialist in canada to handle your case you will be referred to the u.s to the u.s and the provincial government will take care of your bills so that's one major benefit there for healthcare, and i think it's a win-win for everybody and um it's one major thing that i think people should consider if you're if you have your status i don't think you'll get this even if you have your money a lot of people are going on medical tourism to india to go and pay their you know pay hard earned money to get treated because medical situation medical infrastructure in nigeria is so poor and so bad and um people are just living by the grace and mercy of you know of who they believe in the fourth benefit is um the monthly canada child benefit which i have talked about in my previous video that's one thing a lot of families you know enjoy for people who have kids you get a monthly child benefit of about 600 dollars recently they added 20 dollars to it which which can shoot that at least for a family getting 620 dollar per child that's free from the government but it's dependent on your income so like i said in my video when i talked about the canada child benefit if your income is high you you don't get as you don't get the full amount of the canada child benefit and if you're if you're above if you are among the top earners in canada like if you're earning as as from two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in canada that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars net income you don't get any canada child benefit because you are high you are you are earning so much money so that's one thing a lot of families benefit from and if you want to compare that with your home country which government is paying you six hundred dollars for your child no your government is not it doesn't your government does not even bother whether you have a child or not so that's one benefit another benefit that people should consider when they when they start thinking of their status back home number five is um 18 months maternity leave for women so women in canada are really enjoying this benefit because um it's very it's 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 something that it's something that is good for women to really take time to recover after they, after they give birth to their kids compared to where we come from or where i come from where it's just three months master. most organizations just give you three months maternity leave and after that you are back to work but in canada if you're working with the private sector you are getting a one-year maternity leave if you're working with the federal government you're getting one year six months that is 18 months maternity leave and when you're on this maternity leave you get what is called ei and even your your organization can also give you some some um i don't call it some a little benefit added in addition to your ei so you can stay at home and you're still earning um substantial income you know for staying at home to take care of your baby and you can stay at home for for one year it's one year six months to take care of your child you have all the time one year six months to do a lot of things if you want to go back to school within that one year six months you can go back to school all you know is you have an income coming in because you're on maternity leave so that's the benefit is a major benefit for women and for women who have kids um especially women who have who let me let me let me not just say it's a blanket benefit for everybody if you just come uh you give birth to a child and then you start earning no what happens is you have to have been working 
so i'm tying that to the i'm tying that to the sixth point now you have you need to have been working for like um for like 600 hours you know to be entitled to the employment insurance benefit so that's it the, the employment insurance benefit is what women get when they go on maternity leave so you must have been working for 600 hours to get um the employment insurance benefit and employment insurance benefit is 55 percent of your income so now this this point that i'm going to raise is for people who have fears of uh, what if i lose my job compared to other countries i don't know what ha happens in the us if they have such benefits like that but in canada if you are working and you you, you, you get laid off you will be getting 55 percent of your earnings whatever you have earned when you are working you get 55 percent of it monthly for uh for for a maximum of nine months having employment uh, having the employment insurance is very important because um besides you losing your job or besides women who have benefits for uh maternity leave it's also useful for people who um act as caregivers to let's say their parents come into canada and uh, their parents are not feeling well they, they will need some time off maybe one month off or two months off to take care of um, their parents or any family member that is sick you need some time off to take care of your family member that is sick you can um, actually take the employment um, insurance and um, the employment insurance will support you will be like a buffer for you so instead of you going off work without receiving any payment um, you get payment from from the EI, which is the employment insurance. And if you have any form of medical illness and you want to take time off to take or treat yourself, you also get entitled to employment insurance and uh, some benefits attached to it. So that's the benefit of um, having the employment insurance. And then the ultimate, ultimate reason w that I feel it's more important than every other thing that I've mentioned is becoming a Canadian citizen. So when you become a Canadian citizen, you have the Canadian passport. You have access to 100 and over 170 countries in the world. You have access to the Commonwealth Commonwealth countries um, like New Australia, New Zealand, and you can also go to these countries and get jobs from these countries. You can go as go go to take a work permit. If you're tired of Canada as a Canadian citizen, you can decide to move to Australia, get a job in Australia. You'll be given a work permit because you're a Canadian citizen. But if you say because of your status, you cannot, you know, make that sacrifice to come to Canada to come and start or uh, to come and you know, like some people see it like starting all over again. Yes, it's true because immigrating is risky immigrating for people is risky especially people who have seemingly good jobs who have reached a level of um who have achieved some level of accomplishment in their career back home in nigeria for you to leave all that status and then to come back again to start on a level where nobody knows you and you just have to start proving yourself that you are you are efficient you are good you can do the job um, it's quite risky, which I understand why a lot of people will not be comfortable in taking that risk. If you look at the overall picture of the benefits of immigrating, you will see that it's going to pay you more um, if you immigrate. And if you, it's going to pay you more as a Canadian citizen. As a Canadian citizen, you can claim to be a, an expert. And if you decide after getting your citizenship, you can decide to you know, relocate to any other country where you feel that your expertise is needed more you can relocate to these countries and you know work there that's that's what the, that's the benefit of getting the citizenship and that's the benefit of immigrating to canada and living in canada um even recently the Aus the australia yeah australia they held their election and australians in canada voted in canada they are living in canada under work permit so that's one thing you you can benefit from you can be anywhere in the world and if there is an election going on you can vote as long as you're a canadian citizen there are so many benefits i have not been able to mention but i know that these ones are the more, more strong reasons for me to that made me think of you know like um leaving my status behind because um maybe i'll do a story and share my story one day of of my immigration story to canada so that you could understand what what it is like to you know just up and leave because i am more of a global thinker i think i think i had like if 
I am in Canada for this reason. I, my reason for being in Canada is because of this. And if I get this, I'll be able to get this. I'll be able to get that. I know there might be limitations. There might be, you know, there are limitations because of your skin color, because of your accent and stuff like that. But I don't see those things as limitations, as, especially if you know your job, if you know your onions, if you know yourself, if you know how good you are, you'll be able to overcome those limits. And that's where most people are thriving because they know themselves they know what they can offer um i think i've spoken too much on this video uh, it's not my style to speak too much but i'm i'm just mentioning this based on people who have this phobia or of fear of taking risk of um moving of immigrating you know so um, i think i've spoken too much thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye bye